I think one of the best things about living in Kentucky when you grew up in the Chicago suburbs is when it gets cold out, everyone's like, it's going it's to be so cold. It's going to be so chilly. Buy all the milk and all the bread. And it's just, it doesn't, it's like 10 degrees out. I know it's, it's chilly. It's cold. But like, let's all calm down. Let's all just calm down. It is a little chilly though. Welcome to the show. <laughs> the ice what are we gonna do to shut the schools down dude call the mayor an emergency meeting we need funds we need funds for all this ice meanwhile all the big salt manufacturers are like yes buy the salt anyway this has nothing to do with the episode but i it's me so ben! Ben! we need milk and we need bread we need to make milk sandwiches the snow is coming None of you said anything about my hat looking like that. I look ridiculous. Not because it says Louisville for all you UK fans, but just because it was off kilter. So the reason for this episode is because I'm impatient. And Haltech released the Rebel LS ECU for, obviously, LS engines. That is going to be a direct competitor for Holly's Terminator X. And when they originally released it, I was very hopeful for a January, late December, early January shelf hit. And then as time has gone on, that deadline has moved and moved and moved, which is fairly common for new product releases. What's also uh, fairly common for me is my patience just runs out and I'm like, screw it, I'll just, I'll spend more money on something else, which is what I did, but it's still Haltech. Gang, gang, I think is what the kids say. I don't know, the new 21 Savage album dropped and I'm just all about it. So I gotta learn the lingo again. If anyone could drop lingo in the comments for me, please, with descriptions, like everyone's saying Riz now, I only, I only know the Miz, and that's from like real world, real world, real world, road rules. You know the guy, the Miz, right? Anyway, ADD. And this is what I'm going to be doing instead of the Rebel. Now, again, it's still Hall Tech. Let me get this. Okay, so one thing I do like is when they send you the harness, they give you this na little knapsack, a little knapsackaroo. This is going to be powering a Nexus R5 ECU. This is a terminated LS harness that they make for, let me get over there, their R5 ECUs, okay? So Nexus R5 ECU, this is gonna be not only powering the Malibu, sick, but it's also gonna be powering the Trans Am. So that's what I'm gonna run with. I have a, a short list of things to actually complete this car and I wanna get it done. You can see wiring is a big part of it, fill trans radiator oil, blah, 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 fuel filter, blah, 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 blah. So, Bunch of little stuff to do, but the big thing is wiring. I gotta get this thing wired so I can try to fire it, make sure I didn't screw anything up with the engine setup. And this is what's gonna go in. Motion Raceworks mount kit. I have the Motion Raceworks mount kit in the Malibu, as you can see, right yonder way. And I robbed my ECU out of the Malibu to run the Trans Am for now. And I had bought another Motion Raceworks mount kit for this one. So I'll be throwing that, that mount kit in here, show you how that goes, and then we'll start wiring. All right, got my handy dandy tripod set up so you could really see me go on with my hands. Get my slicey McDicey out. Motion Raceworks mount kit. Um, Haltech was out of stock on theirs. Motion has this cool kit. It's actually less expensive. Went this direction. It's 99 bucks and then you don't have to worry about mounting. Now I'll show you the back of this. These are double-sided bolts with like a little isolator in there to help vibration. So this thing shake its face off all the time. It's just nice and sturdy. And it's kind of mellow, like a cruise with your in-laws. You don't want to be there, but you got to be there, right? Yeah, dude, I totally appreciate you being here. It's fun. Set that to the side. Sucker. I can't have sugar, Doug, you dick. Roll bar mount. Very simple. You saw it in the Malibu just now. This bolts to the roll bar, and then this panel bolts to that piece. This little swivel action here, you can angle the dangle however you want. Now, as far as opening this up, my favorite part is this vacuum seal. It's really fun to deal with. It's easy to package stuff. It really, it's like a product condom. Extra tight. No, oh, no, dude. Hold on. Right, and like nothing happened. So again, sucker bolts there. You got swivel action so you can mount this thing in a variety of ways. All the hardware 
Motion Raceworks doesn't sponsor this. Like they don't pay me to do these because obviously they'd be pretty disappointed with the results. But this is a nice option for 99 bucks if you want to mount your Nexus CCU. So that's got to go on yeah, that. One thing to be mindful of here is these bolt hole locations. Bolt hole locations? Bolt hole locations. You want to be able to get to the back side of this if you need to take the ECU off and on. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it right here so I can get in at the back side of the roll cage on all of these and I can pull the ECU out if I need to. Once you get the roll bar clamp in place, a little 3 16 Allen on the back side. Making myself look silly over here. I think it's 12 mil on the front, at least whatever the American version of 12 mil is. That's what I get for being an import kid my whole life. You get the idea. You want to see me tighten these? Probably not. Next clip. All right, I fibbed. It's 11 mil, not 12, okay? That's why it was taking me so long to tighten that sucker. They also give you these bolts, I'm sorry, these nuts and lock washers for the ECU. As long as you got that panel where you want it. Honestly, this is so self-explanatory, but I don't have anything else for content, so stay with me. You just nut this sucker up. Yeah, there you go, dude. It's sick, bro. It's totally riz, 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 a loose, whatever kids say nowadays. You guys want to watch me tighten these nuts? No, you don't. Next clip. There you go. Mounted. Power posts go right to the ECU. The connectors go on the backside. The reason I mounted it like this is they already drilled a bulkhead right yonder way. So I want to carry the wiring up across that top bar and through that hole. And a lot of people say, why don't you mount it to the bar up top, a crossbar, Logan? Well, because I want to take up some of the slack in the LS harness, which I'm going to show you in just a second, because they give you a good amount of slack in that harness. And the harness in question. So before we get to the main harness, I'll show you some of the accessory stuff. They give you these extra leads for inputs and outputs. They also give you extra Deutsch connectors. You can see these are the wedges, the male and female receptacles. They give you three different styles of alternator plugs. So on the, obviously the LS has an exciter wire in each one of these, like the two wire standard joint, the DIY, so you can crimp this yourself for the four wire style, but you have to have an exciter wire. So they give you those options. I'll come back to these. These are the, again, the extra wires. This is nice because a lot of ECU companies don't offer this and it's always nice to have. So extra power leads, ignition leads, this is just, I'm guessing your auxiliary, like there's probably a plug on this harness. Let me guess. Let's see, yeah, cabin breakout A. So if you wanna use your Nexus to power stuff in your cabin, they give you a harness that allows you to do that and you can terminate yourself. And then a gang of extra Deutsch connectors. Deutsch connectors? Deutsch Ruski connectors. The main harness. Like I talked about that bulkhead, that's where that bulkhead sits. The main ECU plugs are right here, okay? So you have four main ECU plugs with all the pins and then a main power auxiliary plug. This is for, you have four 25 amp outputs on board this ECU. That's unique to this ECU. I should call it a VCU, a vehicle control unit, because not there's no other option on the market that has a PDM built into it. So on my RX-7, for example, I use this to power my fuel pump, radiator fans, and my ignition coils. After a pass, I could go back to the data log and I could see how many amps each one of those circuits was pulling because this, um, I'm sorry, the ECU acts as a power distribution module and data logs that, which is sick. So a lot of, a lot of Holly fanatics will, will dog on Haltech parts, whatever. They're, you know the deal. There's two sides of that, of that aisle. There's no product in the market that can do what the Nexus does for the price point the Nexus is. R3, R5, those are killer. The Rebel ECU does not have a built-in PDM in the same capacity, but the Rebel ECU is also for a different price point. This is big kahuna stuff. It will also allow me to do advanced traction control and things like that in this car if I end up racing it, which by the looks of the Malibu, I don't know that that thing is going to be ready soon enough for me to go race. This may be the chariot that we take out and beat its face off. Now, one of the things I'm going to do before I drop this harness in is I am going to repin the injector connectors. They do not offer uh, Bosch 220 style injector connectors, EV14 multi-timer, I don't know what they're called, doesn't matter. ICT Bill Billet stocks these, uh, the Denso style plugs rather, and you can buy them from them, you can buy them on different wiring websites. I got this on Amazon for whatever price, and that's what I'm going to be using. But before I run all that stuff through here, I'm going to pin this first so I don't have to do it hunched over in the engine bay. I can do it on a tabletop. So I'm not going to show you that if you do know or don't know how to... I'll just, should I show, I'm not going to show you. You guys figure it out. Google, 
guy that's better at wiring than Logan that can show me how to pin connectors. And anything but me will show up and you should follow those instructions. I'm just waiting for anyone that is intelligent to leave the video and go watch someone else do wiring. Okay, they're gone. Let's pay attention. All right, if you stuck around, I'm disappointed. I told you to leave, but you're still here. So on these harnesses, there's two separate leads for injectors, right? You have two banks, two leads. One of the leads as the odd injectors, you can see they're all like nicely labeled. This is not split loom junk, it's full loom. And what I do is I actually just pull this back a little bit so I don't mess up the label at all. And I either deep pin or I snip at the ends. I say I, I deep pin them, I never deep pin them. I just wanna sound like I'm not haggard, but I snip these off and then I repin the fresh injectors, injector connectors to these to suit the injectors that are on the car. Oh man, and I know there's people out there that are like, oh, you suck at wiring. Well, you know, I don't care, dude. I suck at running a, a model catwalk, but I still do it in my spare time. So what do you guys say about that? So first thing you're gonna do is take your seal and you're gonna shove it over the wire, okay? That's uh, the first thing you do. If you do it after you strip the wire, it's a pain in the bottom. Have some crimpers handy or some splitters handy. I think this is 20, just a little bit off the top. Like you're getting a haircut even though you're bald. Take that joint, and then if you see, the actual connector has a couple closing clasps on it. I'm going to show you where to clasp that. What I do is, I lay it in there, and I can't do it with, uh, with one hand, so I'm going to show you here. You're going to take your crimpers, you're going to crimp the copper around the upper lead, and you're going to crimp the lower lead around the seal. These are push-to-lock seals. So once I'm done with this, I'll push this in the back side of the connector. You're going to hear a click. And that click is a tab, a plastic tab inside the connector that's it's probably going to be tough to see. You see that? Let me get a pointing tool. I'd use Rise Wiener, but he's not here. Um, you see this little flappy dude? That's a lock, and you're going to hear that thing click into place when it's sealed. So pretty easy, pr pretty straightforward. But if you do not know how to crimp wiring, make sure that you look up somebody that's better in it than I am. And uh, if, you, if you really need wiring supplies, uh, Bluegrass Race Electronics, Blake, uh, Bonkers Coffee. He's great to talk to. Just shoot him emails blankly and ask open blanket questions and he's happy to help. That is who I recommend. Okay, let me see if I could do this properly without everyone thinking I'm an idiot. So seal on, lay the copper inside there, but rest the, the stalk of that seal inside the second crimp zone and you just squeeze. Okay, let go. See that crimp up top? Now on your crimpers, a lot of them will have numbers on them. Like these are not expensive crimpers. They're 20 bucks or something. 22 to 24 is where I'm at. And then the actual seal side, you'll go ahead and do that as well. So now I have a crimp on the actual seal and a crimp on the actual wire. Tug test it, make sure it's not coming loose. Grab your injector connector. Hear that click? That sucker's in there like swimwear. We are locked and ready to go. And you'll see the backside has a seal that's gonna keep water intrusion out of it. This part of the video is dedicated to all the people that turned it off after the last part because they knew better than me on how to wire and they're currently typing up a comment in the comment section about what tools are better, how to better do it, this, that, and the other. Normally people get butthurt about this stuff, but I don't. I'd actually prefer if there's some knowledgeable people in the comments to help you out because I, you know, it's, it's me. The, the, the show is called Clapped Out. If that's not an indication of, hey, maybe maybe reach out to other people just in case, then I don't know what is. But either way, I think you get the picture. Right, and that's one side done. Connectors are all done. Obviously, I don't want to just time lapse me doing these the whole day because it's annoying for you probably to watch. But one side's completely done. I'll do the other bank and I'll be ready to run this harness into the cab. Let's do a fast time recap. So I'm gonna put a timestamp on here. A few people skipped ahead. This is how I wire injector connectors. All right, just to recap, slide your seals over the wire. Strip the wire at the very end. Twist the wire so it makes a nice firm little dill dally. And then you're gonna take your connectors. You're gonna find 20 to 24 because that's the size pin you're doing. You're gonna lay that in with the opening side facing the opening. I'll explain in a second. Okay, see if that focuses up for you. See how the opening is facing up. You're gonna lay the wire into the connector, crimp, squeeze, and let go. Again, you'll see that's made a crimp. 
Okay, but now we got to do the seal. So you slide the seal up and you get it inside that second clasp and back to your button or your crimpers, you see the second round of 20 to 24, that's gonna be for the seal. So you flip them over, you go to that 20, 24 mark, same deal, facing up, and you watch that sucker work. Boom, it grabs the seal, pinches into it, and now you have a nice firm connection. You take your plug, go on the back side of it, listen to the click, that's in there. Simple enough. Good, great, grand, wonderful. No yelling on the bus. All right, so the reason I wanted to show that specifically because again, it's filler footage, right? But it is important because a lot of places sell injector adapters, right? It's the male side of one and the female side of the other. And it's just, it's a jumper harness for whatever injectors you use. We have an injector machine at Dynasty that we use and we test these injector adapters and they are absolute hot garbage. If there's even a small crimp that's jacked up, whatever, in either side of that, there's just more room for failure with those jumpers. So instead of just having a jumper, more wiring, more connectors, more junk that can go wrong, just wire your proper injector connectors. Try not to cut and splice and butt connect and all that stuff if you can. If you can't, just make sure it's done properly with a good seal. But it's always better to actually crimp the connector properly instead of having to use an adapter. Adapters are the devil. They're the devil. And if you like about it like you, dude. Now, possibly an unpleasant part of the video. I don't know uh, if you guys want a part two to show me running this harness into the car, happy to do it. However, filming, when I make these videos, I literally work film, work film, and I make the video as I do it. Whenever I do wiring, I hate to do that because it's kind of a pain in the ass to stop every two seconds, lose my train of thought. If you haven't, if you couldn't tell, I have ADD in a very serious way. So what I'll probably end up doing is I'll run this harness in the car and I'll do a recap video next week and show you how the harnesses ran. Because in all honesty, if you can get that far, you can wire a car. I mean, especially with the Nexus, it is not difficult. The only terminations you really need to make are to fuel pump relays and things of that nature, which I will run through and show you how I did it. But if you can crimp fuel injector connectors, you can set a relay up. But again, I'll, I'll put a recap video up of it, of it ran and how it goes, what else you need to make. It shouldn't be too difficult whatsoever. If you have any questions or concerns, jump in the comments, but tag Rye, don't tag me. And I'll put his personal cell phone number in the description too. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a blessed day. Did you subscribe though? You didn't subscribe. Subscribe to the channel, dude. Seriously, if we ever make it big, all we're gonna do is give a bunch of money away. I haven't talked to Rye about this yet, but I'm just gonna be charitable the whole time and give all his money away, keep all money for me. But seriously, subscribe, please, dude. I'm begging you, I don't beg for anything. I beg for a lot. Of, there's a lot of things I beg for. Maybe don't subscribe. Honestly, I'm probably a bad influence. Bye. I gotta feed the streets. My pistol gon' bleed the streets. Ski mask on my face. Sometimes you got to cheat to stay ahead in this bitch. Oh. Drinks her black as liquor. Street life will have you catching up to God quicker. <laughs>